Hello, and welcome to the All Things Narrative Podcast, where we explore the relationships between the stories we love and the stories we live. I'm your host, Derek Hatch, and let's get started. Excelsior, and welcome. You guys like that, Excelsior? Like that, that kind of work? I like, I like Excelsior. I don't get it. Nope. You don't get it? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Okay, Stan Lee's catchphrase was Excelsior. I know, I remember it yeah. from Stan Lee, but I don't get it still. So it's actually Latin for higher on up. The superhero story. And that's what we're here to talk about today, why we love Marvel. And so just a reminder that this is your last chance to sign up for the Live a Meaningful Story workshop that we're having in the Lake Worth area. So we got a couple spots left. So if you want to be in on that and you love story and you want to talk about the story of your life and how to know it better, how to tell it and how to live into a more meaningful one, then come on out. Six week workshop, sign up, $100 early bird special, and you can sign up at the link in the show notes. So, why we love Marvel. We're doing this, guys. We're doing this. We are. I'm just here for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Nixon has podcast groove since last time. He's getting yeah, there. Yeah. I'm getting a little yeah. more comfortable. He's ready. Jason, how are you doing? I'm ready for the fights. That we, fight. ta- that we talk about. The fights that we talk about. The fights we Not talk about. Not the fights amongst each other. It might be civil war here, too. Interesting. We could have a civil war breakout on this podcast. Um, you want to make sure that you stay till the end of this episode, though, because we're going to talk a little bit about my man, Joe Lee Starks. We're going to talk about his stop motion films and our saviors and yeah. all the awesome stuff that he makes. And it ties in with the MCU mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. So I want to make sure we get to that and get to hear a little bit of, of your art and what you create. Yeah, I think you guys are going to be you know, very um, interested in what I have to say about it all. I can't wait. Hopefully it's a tease because I love looking forward to your stuff. I have to get my lines in still. <laughs> <laughs> you still didn't do it? I figured we were going to be here today, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, so gentlemen, to start, let's talk about our personal introductions to Marvel. So how did each one of you come across this big, epic franchise thing that we call Marvel. Who would like to start? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Really, because you guys can't get it together. Wow. (laughs) We press pause. Now it's going to (laughs) start. Fair. So, (laughs) I think I was, it it was that slow buildup from when they started doing the superhero movies even when they made like the bad Daredevil movie, that's Bullseye. Not <laughs> <laughs> but um, up from the original Spider-Man movies too, I think it was it did start with with Iron Man. It was the first Iron Man movies, and like this is this is actually really cool, and mm. it just kind of went from there. I didn't really read any of the the comic books. That just wasn't a resource that happened up in my childhood, so sure. I don't really have a an attachment with it. I think it's cool, but. You know, I have no no real relationship with any of that source material. So it was the films that brought you into it? Yeah, the films. Okay. And the, oh, and the video games. Like, I would, my brother like Marvel, and I would. Marvel uh, yeah, versus Capcom? Is, Marvel, so this is not Ultimate just the Mar- Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is entirety, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, the video games. My brother and I would go to, here's, a, here's an old sentence. We would go to Blockbuster. Yeah. And rent a Spider-Man <laughs> movie for the, or, or video game for the weekend. and we'd be, Which we'd one? Be, Which one? It depended. There's Web of Sa- Shadows. There's the old one for, I think we had one for the PS1. The PS1 Spider-Man game is so much fun. And very clacky, too. And, uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's the word I think. Think prequels. That's that's my word for for just something that's super goofy but enjoyable. <laughs> um, but it was the video games, the Spider-Man video games, a lot of them, and then yeah. some other adventure stuff. All right, cool. Yeah. How about you, Joe? Uh, mine is kind of similar to Jason. I uh, saw the Spider-Man movies, like the um, like the Sam Raimi two thousand two. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. brother like loved those, so I was okay. growing up watching that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't my favorite superhero. I was just like, okay, cool, superhero Spider-Man. He swings. I can through. forgive you for that. I'm, I'm, you know, it was all right, but my first real like okay i really like this stuff is the first iron man movie okay yeah so mine was kind of introduction with that as well besides the video games i you know because i didn't play video games sure um it was the mcu okay it was how about you nick same all around i think um actually though blade was 
Is Blade Marvel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Blade, yeah. Blade came before everything. Yeah, it was the late was the 90s, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I remember that one. I remember Spider-Man and then Iron Man blew up. Oh, and, and then, X-Men. Yeah. yeah, the first X-Men movie. Yeah. That oh, was I huge. I forgot about that. Yeah, so yeah, forgot people don't un- remember from that. You probably remember from that time because yeah. we were around the same age. <laughs> that like, no, that dude, movie was huge. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was like the movies for you guys, basically. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so obviously you guys know for me that my introduction was a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, I cannot remember a time in my life where Marvel was not around. Interesting. Um, I, I can't. The toys were always there. Mm-hmm. The, the, everything was all... The Saturday morning cartoons. I don't remember when I first started watching them. But I do remember that growing up in the 90s, um, it was... There was a lot of the Saturday morning, you know, like the X-Men and the Spider-Man, the uh, animated series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff. And then it was, yeah, it was the 90s shows and the toys. Um, going to comic book shops, my dad took me and my brother to comic. We had two really great comic book shops in Escondido, California, Joe. That's right. Um, we had two good shops there that we would go to. But my introduction to Marvel, like my prime introduction was actually the comics themselves. Mm-hmm. When I really got into Marvel, but in fifth grade, the summer, that summer, uh, we discovered eBay. Um, <laughs> and we discovered that you could buy comic books on eBay, mm. like collectible comics, like yeah. the classics, you know? And my dad had all those comic books growing up, and he did what most people did at the time, just threw them away, just mm. dispose of them. Because that's what comic books were, is they were wow. disposable. And yeah, right? How much has changed? Right. So... You know, we actually spent a whole summer together, me, my dad, and my brother, buying comics on eBay. Like, literally, my dad teaching me how to bid on eBay in fifth grade (laughs) and putting in credit card infos and stuff like that. (laughs) I felt like an adult. I felt really cool. You know, I was like, oh, sweet. I can watch the auction. Uh, He's like, I'm going to take a nap. Can you keep an eye on this one? (laughs) You know? But yeah. um, but I loved it because and that box behind you is that is what came out of that summer. That box behind Joe down there, oh, nice. that is my comic book collection, and the majority of the stuff in there came from that summer of bidding on comics. So I love oh. reading the comics. I have lots of graphic novels and omnibuses and stuff up there as well. And I'll talk more about my love for the comics later. But yeah, that's where it started for me. That's awesome. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, totally different. Yeah, with the comics, I've since I didn't really grow up with the comics. I just watch um like the comic explains on YouTube. Like you, you get know, filled in pretty much. So there's I know, a lot to keep up with. Yeah, because I know the information, but I've never really picked up a comic. Sure, so I'm, I'm that type. I'm hoping that I'm might better. change after this podcast because I really it's want already people changed. to read the comics. I want, I want some comics. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get you guys. Oh, gonna buy I'm gonna get you guys comics? thirsty. <laughs> I will buy you comics. I just want some comics. If you read them, if you I want read some them. comics from your box though. Um, those are inheritance for my children. So we always take a time to do a quote unquote brief history uh, so that way people can understand uh, just why this became so popular. And so a brief history of Marvel and the MCU. So I'll see how many of you guys uh, know these facts. So do you guys know what Marvel Comics was originally called when it was created in 1939? No. DC Comics. Just stop. Death glare Turn this right, off now. right now. <laughs> um, it was called Timely Comics and it was published by a gentleman named Martin Goodman. Hmm. And the first Marvel comic ever was called Marvel Comics. Huh. Okay. So that was the first thing they ever published. And do you know who the first superhero they ever invented was? Um, Captain Marvel. I was going to say, nope. Mr. Mr. Marvel? Nope. Fantastic Four. Nope. Oh, um, it was the Human Torch. Really? And really? he was an android, Joe yes. kind of wins. Yeah. So he was Human Torch, uh, yeah, like and android? it was a Human Torch. Yeah, like it was a different android? Human Torch. <laughs> it was a Human Torch <laughs> and the Submariner. And it's interesting because they wow. it was about two heroes that had different perspectives that collided together. So this idea of heroes fighting heroes was there from the beginning. Oh, wow. And this idea of not... Because DC's very clear-cut. This is the hero. This is the villain. Mm-hmm. From Marvel's very beginning, it was already murky and gray. That's Everybody good. gets the square Which hands, is interesting. Honestly. Now, where Marvel really blew up was when Joe Simon and Jack Kirby created uh, the iconic Captain America mm-hmm. uh, as America was getting into World War II. Yeah. And you have mm-hmm. that famous cover of Captain America punching Hitler in the face, yeah. which actually got the Nazis' attention. <laughs> and Nazi, the Nazis actually sent death tr- threats to wow. Timely Comics to get that off the shelves. And that's what where Marvel really blew up was mm-hmm. with Captain America. 
And so Captain America was hugely successful. Yeah. And then when World War II ended, they didn't know what to do with Captain America, so they stuck him in ice. And right. around, as I've shared on the, there. on the, oh <laughs> yeah. my gosh, yeah. And as I shared on the Batman episode, uh, comic books took a nosedive after World War II, mm. um, as people wanted to get away from that whole good versus evil struggle. So in the fifties, Marvel did what every other publisher did, and they made things about monsters and aliens and you know teen stuff, and you know just really no, really generic <laughs> stuff. Uh, it did not do well. Marvel was going under. The Comics Code Authority was passed uh, to where comic books were becoming heavily censored at the time. The comic book industry was at an all-time low. But there was a gentleman who was a temp there, and he uh, started to rise up a little bit during the 50s, just kind of doing the grunt work, and he had an idea. And uh, it was his wife that came to him and said, you should tell the comic book that you want to write, and you should pitch it to them. And he said, okay, I will. And, of course, this is Stan Lee, who – that is not his real name. And he used the name Stan Lee because comic books were kind of a, an embarrassing industry at the time. And he mm. didn't want his real name, Stan Lee Lieber, to be on the, on the book. Wow. But, yeah, but his wife saved the comic book industry forever yeah. because his wife inspired him to create the one and only Fantastic she Four number one, right? <laughs> she actually is a cameo in, in X-Men Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Really? Apocalypse. Yeah, she's in X-Men Apocalypse. Everything yeah, tell me who it they is. built but, um, <laughs> Yeah, right? So, um, so Stanley creates Fantastic Four and it's, a, it's about a dysfunctional family that has superhero powers. Wide yeah. hit. The, you know, Stanley, Jack Kirby, they just got this creative spark at that point. Steve, throw in Steve Ditko and Bill Everett. And these guys, over the next four or five years, create the largest, it's the, it's the biggest creative boom I can ever think of in fiction. Mm. Like, the, you literally get all the Marvel classic superheroes in four to five years. That they're just pumping them yeah. out left and right. It's like month to month. Like every month there's a new hero that's being made. And they're yeah. like the lasting heroes. Of yeah. Culture. Wow. And they didn't think they were all going to last long either. Yeah. But when Stanley and Jack Kirby were writing Fantastic Four and they saw the success, they kept it going. And they did it for like 110 issues or something like that. Then Stan Lee stayed on Spider-Man for 100 mm -hmm. issues. So it was it was blowing up. And I think one of the reasons it blew up is because it was very relevant to what was going on at the time. You see, Fantastic Four was like a dysfunctional family, so people could relate to that. Um, you got the Incredible Hulk, which was another massive character that was a metaphor, of course, for nuclear war and the fears mm -hmm. of the Cold War and what would happen if somebody could survive that blast. What would it do to them? What sort of oh, anger cool. would that harbor, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so, and Hulk was massively popular. Yeah. Um, and of course, the other really popular one was, was my boy Spidey. Spidey. Um, and because Spider-Man was really the first teen, like really compelling teen superhero story. And it was, uh the you know the youth the youth counterculture that was developing at the time uh spider-man was huge for that especially with steve ditko drawing it because he's very psychedelic and the stuff that when you picked up a marvel comic book uh you never saw anything like that dc was never doing anything as bold in terms of art style and in terms of the complexity of their characters now dc caught up eventually mm -hmm. but in the 60s it all goes to marvel so the another key to Marvel's success was that they had way they were very intentional about interacting with their fans. Mm -hmm. So they had Stan's soapbox, which is where Stan would kind of yeah. share his heart with mm. fans, you know, after reading an issue. And then they had wow. letters to the editor. So people would send in letters and they would publish the letters in the comic book. And the letters, if you read them, they're really fascinating because they're like going on modern day message boards like Reddit. Mm -hmm. Like they literally read That's like funny. Reddit stuff. Like, dear <laughs> Mr. Lee, with all due respect, I don't know if the – if um. You know, the char yeah. this character was really day, compelling. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more polite. <laughs> but all due respect is already like hey, never listen, been true. I know this is your character, you made it, but like Bet. <laughs> The word respect. <laughs> but but yeah, but it was just back and forth and they invited fans into that creative process hmm. and it was and they got feedback. And that's I think what was key to their success. And then in the seventies um and the eighties Marvel kind of starts to grow and mature from kind of like the safer Silver Age stories. Uh, Marvel is huge in turning the tide of comics. You know, the rise of anti-heroes anti and you've got like Frank Miller, Chris Claremont 
coming in and taking these characters all to the next level. You've got characters like the X-Men that are metaphors for contemporary issues like, you know, prejudice and the outcasts and all that stuff. Um, And really in the 90s, Marvel started to really hit beyond the comic book world into the more pop culture world through the Saturday morning cartoons. Those exploded in popularity. Um, But it's and and toys as well. Toy sales. They had a huge deal. I forget which toy company, but they had a huge deal with a toy company that just blew them up. And then I don't know if you guys know this, but in the 1990s, Marvel goes bankrupt. Yeah. I did not that's, know that. That's how Sony. I did not had, know that. That's how Sony has um, Spider Man. Uh, Universal. Universal has Hulk. Yep. Um, oh. Fox had the X Men and Fantastic Four. And Fantastic Four. So that's why everything was so split up when the MCU started because mm-hmm. they didn't have everything because they had to sell everything so that they could stay afloat. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and they sold Spider Man. Yeah, they sold. They had well, they to. sold. We okay, the clarify. They, they, sold, what they sold. They sold the film rights to the these characters. Rights, yeah. Okay, and and the only film rights they held on to were some of the Avengers. Um, now they have almost all those film rights back, with the exception of Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Spider Man is now a partnership that they have, mm-hmm. but they always had the comic book rights and all the merchandising rights. But it's just the film rights. But there's three things that saved the bankruptcy of Marvel. You guys know what they are? No. Iron Man. Is it, is it the no, 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 no. It's not. Is it the Avengers? No. Then I don't know. The 2000 Brian Singer X Men movie, which was the first like critical success Marvel superhero movie. Mm-hmm. The first X Men movie. Yeah. Oh. The 2002 Sam Raimi Spider Man movie. Okay. That's... Um, yeah, that makes sense. Which really that's solidified that Marvel was going to be okay. Well, both of those things. Mm-hmm. But and then in the comic book industry, if you look on that shelf behind you, there's a comic book series up there called Ultimate Spider Man. And Brian Michael Bendis created the Ultimate Comics, which was a reboot uh, and an alternate retelling of the Marvel stories. Oh, and there that's and, the comic line where it um they're more grown like superheroes are more grounded. Like yes. it's not just like it's more a little more grown up, a yeah. little more intense. But it also brought new readers in because the continuity had become so muddled by that point. This brought new readers into it. And now with all these new readers, they could literally start, uh, start over and keep up. And the series, for good reason, I think it's one, it's one of, if not my favorite comic book series of all time, mm. um, it just blew up. And it was exactly what Marvel needed to stay afloat. And now, of course, we know in 2008 with Iron Man, as you guys mentioned, they start the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They start making their own movies. They start getting all the rights to their characters back. Disney buys Marvel. And Disney, really, the thing is, is like... And now Disney owns the world. Disney owns the world. Um, they've literally... <laughs> the evil empire. <laughs> right? Um, but Marvel really did a good job making themselves in a position to where Disney would even be interested in them. Mm-hmm. And so Marvel is really a little tiny company Mm -hmm. that really rose, kind of like George Lucas, what we shared last episode. Marvel is really a story of an underdog with many, many obstacles coming their way. I mean, even the fact that they're just a bunch of, when they started, they're just a bunch of Jewish guys getting Nazi death threats. Like even from the beginning of their history, they were against the odds. But yeah, let's um, let's get into the meat of the conversation now, which is the Marvel. We're, so the Marvel mythos. We talked about this a little bit on Star Wars, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit more here. Is that superheroes are our modern myths? Like you have in in Greco Roman culture, you had the Greek gods and goddesses that united the culture together. Because America, we don't have a, a, a state or national religion like England does, where Christianity, you're like the Church of England, stuff like that. We don't have that in America. So myth really provides a way of uniting people around common values and principles that we as a culture can lift up and say yes. We're in there. And that's what superheroes really are. And that's why I think these movies are really taking off. So do you guys have any thoughts about that idea about superheroes as myth and Marvel and and all that? Yeah, I, and this will kind of go on later after the podcast um, when talking about like my stop motions. But the, the MCU has inspired me um, just like with the ideas of like with superheroes and, and villains and greys and all that different type of stuff. Yeah. It's a very inspirational thing. 
like especially growing up with it all yeah you know as starting from the beginning starting from the beginning and then going all the way up and seeing these characters grow and yeah. these characters build and grow with you and it's like wow i, I have a connection with these characters now so, right no, i definitely agree with that it's our modern modern myth of legends and things like that yeah what do you guys think of that I think that myth and just characters in general really provide a vessel for vis- visualization of yes. what uh, yes. what values that we're striving for, what we want to do, what we want to see. If we're if we're conquering something in our in our life, if we're in our moment of strength, what are we trying to? What's the image that we're trying to attain? What are we trying to look like? Who are we trying to look like? What do we see ourselves as? Where do we see ourselves in our own story? And that provides something to look forward to, something tangible to to grasp onto, right? To push us, push our own selves up. Yeah, that's, that's good. What has it's been used that I've seen? Yeah, I like that. Uh, I think for me, I I've always loved film. I've mm-hmm. always loved story, but the kind of story didn't matter so much to me as long as it was told well and that the mm. film actually looked good. And so I would dive into all ranges of film yeah and i would enjoy marvel because they're fun but i didn't quite dial in so much the myth aspect sure um that this podcast is actually teaching me so when you say that in a text message that that the yes, last, jedi, the text. The last right. jedi is not the story that i need it got me thinking mm-hmm. well what story do i need and yeah. do we all need the same story mm-hmm. right. so now we get to look at these myths because they're all separate heroes they're yeah. all right. different kinds of people and yeah. heroes what kind of stories do we relate to and what kind of stories do we need? And, so the myth thing is... is and I on. truly believe that like with Marvel, there's a story for somebody, story mm-hmm. for everybody. Mm-hmm. There's some character that you're going to connect with because that's how diverse the characters are, you know? Yeah. So I, I love that um, because there are certain stories that maybe people need at certain times in their lives and there's certain characters that are going to help with that. And then there's other characters that maybe you know, you're going to cling to for your life for whatever reason, which I'm sure that's what we're going to mm-hmm. talk mm-hmm. about in a moment. So that's that's good. Does that mean I'm right about The Last Jedi, though? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But, but like I said in the text that you are right. You are right because your perspective is valid and that's where you come from. But it's not a black and white issue. Yes. It's more of a great issue. We are yep. both right in the way we approach that movie. Because we're all great Jedi. Life in the just, gray. Just turn it off. Just turn it off. Yeah, I think I think those, that lightsaber needs to be buried too. I didn't even know that that existed. Does that really exist? Yeah, or is that just no? It really exists. Is no? No, it's a real thing. So lie. it's important to understand before because we are going to talk about the films in a moment. But before we talk about the films, I want to take a second to talk about the comic book, which because that's the medium where these myths were formed, and there's a reason why I think comic book was the medium that it was, because. One, one thing that's really cool is that comic books is one of the only art forms that's actually created here in America. It is an American art form. Really? Like, you've got jazz music. You've got a couple other styles of music. You've got comic book. There isn't really much, you know, in terms of major innovations that affect the world, mm-hmm. you know? I did not know comics were made from America. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I'm learning yeah. so I'm much. trying to figure out what that means about <laughs> us. The yeah. Only, the only film so, I'm familiar with that's similar to it is, is manga, so well, I don't know which game. Well, which even like, was, even like the, film, yeah, film's not from, stuff, that's not an American like, uh, medium. Yeah. That was invented mm-hmm. in Paris, I believe, right? right? So it's like a lot what of was? things, film, I film movies, isn't, they yeah, weren't invented in America. So, but, but with the comic book though, here's what's cool about it. Here's why the comic book is easily one of my probably top two favorite mediums of storytelling. Because number one, the oldest forms of storytelling that we know, there's there's a couple of them. Number one are cave paintings, right? Mm. Cave paintings that illustrated these myths when they were very beginning. So comic books, you've got the illustrative aspect of it. Like you're looking at art, a piece of art that's telling a story. Not a standalone piece of art, but it's art in cool. succession mm. that's building a story. The second really popular ancient art form was theater. And theater was driven by two things, dialogue and monologue so dialogue conversation between characters and monologue what's going on in a character's head Mm -hmm. so there wasn't a lot of narration in theater like when you read a novel you know and you're saying like johnny said i'm going to get you like that wasn't how theater worked Mm -hmm. it was this action you know they weren't always fast paced but it was it was about the dialogue and the monologue of it right and when you open a comic book what do you see? You literally see these two ancient forms of storytelling mm. right here. Mm. You see the cave painting, like the succession of art, and you see dialogue and monologue. 
Mm-hmm. That's what you see it when you open a comic book. So you are literally, when you open a comic book, you are participating in the oldest forms of storytelling that have been around. Wow, it's a marriage of the first two. A marriage. Cool. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's that's what I really love about comics. And and for me, I struggled with reading comprehension like in school and like reading like novels and trying to remember because I'm not good with like sensory, like descriptive writing, like the very sensory details, like like Tolkien going into all this detail about what a mountain looks like. Yeah. I don't mm. I, I have a hard time with just paying attention and yeah. yeah so comic books for me are great because you, you know it. mm. it's the visualization but there's just enough room for your imagination still yeah you know what do the characters sound like how do yeah. they move across the page and and for me i read stories for dialogue and monologue i want to know what's going on in their head and what characters are saying to each other and what that reveals about them so for me comic books are like the perfect medium for just what i like Mm -hmm. but you know with a film when you watch a film it just goes and you have to keep going with the film but when i open a page in a comic book like I'm, i'm literally opening a page right now um and it's like I was reading this and like this image right here of like – and I'm going to talk about this image later of Matt Murdock and Karen Page. And it's just like I could sit on this and I could just think about it and feel it and take in all the detail in the art, you know? Yeah. So it's like that's what I love about comic books. So um, yeah, any thoughts on those things? Yeah, it's interesting to hear like the perspective of someone like who actually grew up with comic books and like just like – just read comic books because again i didn't do that so but hearing that is like wow that i could understand why someone's like yeah no dude comics are like dope like honestly get on that train but <laughs> but no <laughs> joe i feel like you should make your own comic i feel like you should I would, yeah, i have your movies but i feel like you should i would, I would love to make a little comic book you series. need an illustrator yeah Bet. yeah Who wants to do that for me yeah we should do I, it, I we should do it together Oh, that'd be we so- should make a Listen, comic we could all yeah. fo- we could all of us make a comic book. Like I, I could do some of the writing. I can't draw to save my life. I could do mm. some of the writing. That'd be fun. I, I can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I taught a comic book class at our work one time, and that was so much fun to mm-hmm. see like kids come alive, like creating their own comics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and because that's cool because you're teaching them literacy and stuff, mm-hmm. but you're also like tapping into their artistic skills. Yeah. So it's literally like if you're a words person, like I'm more of a words person with art. Comic books are great for you. And if you're more a visual person, I mean, the only thing you don't really get with comic books, sadly, is music. But mm-hmm. I'll argue that music is my music other right favorite right. medium. Mm-hmm. Um, next to the so, book. But that's yeah. a whole other topic for <laughs> another day. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to part one of Why We Love Marvel. And this is where we're going to break because when we recorded this episode, it went so dang long because we love Marvel. And we got a lot more coming for you. And so we'd like to invite you next week to join us for part two where we will discuss all things Marvel Cinematic Universe. So the films, the television shows, anything related to the Infinity Saga, we got you covered next week. Deep dives into characters, story arcs, what we like, what we dislike, rankings. And of course, we'll end by discussing how Marvel can empower you and how it has empowered us to live a meaningful story. So I hope you'll join us for that next week. Uh, This is your friendly narrative practitioner, Derek, signing off, saying thank you so much, take care, and excelsior.